All right, I said I was going to do a whole build series on this on YouTube, and that clearly didn't happen because I'm already pretty deep into the build. However, I'm sure all you guys want to build update on it, and I need to do something because a bunch of you do want YouTube content. So I'm going to go ahead and do a walk around kind of what's been going on with the Jeep, where I'm at, and what's to come. So stay tuned. All right, so right now on the front of the Jeep, not much is different. I just painted the front bumper, got rid of any little bit of rust that was on it. It is a California Jeep, so it's not bad. Um, I've got the full inner fenders ripped out of it. I made a new battery. Well, not made, but I fixed the bracket for the battery tray because that ripped a hole in the firewall, so that's why this is all a mess. I need to paint over it again, but that's all sealed up and fixed, so it's strong and won't leak anymore. Got all the brackets cut off the frame so it's nice and smooth. I got it all painted with steel it so it's ready to weld on any hoops and bump cans that I have. And starting to get the front ready for all the big suspension. So the plan up front, it's gonna have a three link kit that I'm gonna make with my friends, my uncle, my dad, and it's using Barnes parts. So the tubes and the, um, I think it's like, they're like, they call them enduro joints. They're like a Johnny joint kind of. Um, all those parts are from Barnes using TMR hoops with a big brace across the engine bay. Um, so I have to figure out what I'm going to do with all this. So cold air intake's going to have to move. The ECM's going to have to move. Ashpod's going to have to move. I am going to get rid of the ARB compressor. I had an issue with it once on Rubicon. I don't want to repeat and I don't want to carry spare parts for it because it's big, bulky, heavy. So I've been talking with Power Tank on something like that and... We have a cool solution. They have a cool product to replace that. I'll have more on that later. I'll do a whole video on just that alone. But that should be cool. Uh, a little bit more slick and more durable than that. Otherwise, the front's going to stay kind of the same. Uh, I might stretch it about like an inch. Whatever I can do without changing my steering. Um, the front's worked. So I don't really have much to change. I'm going from a radius arm to a three-link. but other And well, in coilovers. But other than that, it's kind of the same. Now, as far as axles, this is my rear axle. It's still the Dana 44s. I know I'm going to get a bunch of hate for it, especially running 39s, which I'll get to later, but never had an issue. It served me well. A bunch of people running 40s now on these, so it's going to work, and it's going to be cool, and it's going to be cheaper than a set of one tons. So there's the rear axle. I do have a truss, again, from Barnes. It goes over there, over the top of the pumpkin. I have not installed it yet. Uh, the front axle is also still a Dana 44, but as you can see, it is not sitting up here because it is currently at an axle shop called Hoopers because I can't get the RCVs in and I don't know if the housing is slightly bent or if there's something wrong with the knuckle or if I'm just stupid and I can't put together an axle correctly. I don't know, but it's there. They've had it for two weeks now and I'm still trying to figure it out. So we'll see what that looks like before that gets put back under here. Hopefully sometime next week, start figuring out wheelbase. The only thing changing on the axles, other than the truss and, well, the paint and the brackets, is that the rear is pretty much the exact same. The front's going to have RCVs, but otherwise they both still have 513 G2 gears. The rear has chromalis, and they both have ARB lockers. Now for the rear, we have a back half kit. So this is a kit from Motobuilt. Um, really scary to put on, but went together actually fairly easy. Uh, so it cut, we cut the frame right here, the back of the last body mount, and all that gets ripped out. It gives you a nice, clean, flat surface to weld to. It gets rid of the stupid hoop that was in it, so your axle can come up a little bit further. And with the new bumper that comes included with it, you get a lot more ground clearance. So instead of the bumper saying hanging like below the body, kind of like this, my dumb hand illustration. It uh, now sits inside the tub, doesn't hang out the sides, and gives me almost unlimited departure angle. So that's pretty cool. And it's going to look pretty wild in the back having no more fuel tank underneath, no more track bar. It's just going to be a big axle and coil over, so it should look pretty wild. In the tub, we do have a fuel saw now. Like I said, the factory gas tank's no longer underneath, so we have a Motobelt 19-gallon fuel cell, 19, 19 and a half, something like that. Cool thing with this is hopefully it'll still pass smog. I got to work around that a little bit, but it uses the factory fuel pump. Um, 
so your fuel gauge and all that still works correctly. And like I said, it should pass smog. We'll see. Um, the battery is still going to go in the front. Like I said earlier, this is just chilling back here because I need to make room and I didn't want it just laying on the floor. Uh, the safe jack is not mounted currently, but it's going to get mounted somewhere back here similar to that. Not sure yet, but that's because I hate high lift jacks and they're garbage and they try to kill me every time I use them. So I'm excited to try that out. Now on these tubs, this was something my uncle talked me into. I said, oh, those are cool. And he's like, oh, let's do it. And it was a lot of work. <laughs> so these are moto built high clearance rear tubs or fenders or whatever you want to call them. Basically you keep the floor and you keep this rail and that's it. Everything else here gets cut out, all the pinch welds. And when you do so, the whole body gets really weak. You can kind of just like push on the fender a little bit and the whole body would tweak and it's super scary. But I now have all the room I could possibly want to stuff the 39s like I was saying. So I should be able to keep the Jeep nice and low. As you can see, it picked the fender line up um, as well as open it up side to side. So between that and the back half kit, I have a ton of room in here. I think people are running like 46 inch tires or something like that, 44s in this setup, but obviously I'm not doing that. Yes, my cage is cut. It's gonna get tied back into the frame. I haven't done so yet because I got to see where my coilovers and stuff are going to mount. But uh, when we raise the tub up, you can see the factory cage probably ended right about here. So you can see how much more room we got. So I have to re-weld that to the frame instead of it being mounted to the tub like it was before. God forbid there's a rollover and it just punches to the floor. So this should be stronger. And I think that's really it for the back. Oh, I have Max built. Trail tails, I think they're called. I'll get mounted back here. That's super cool. No more Harbor Freight trailer lights because that's what comes on Jeeps. And then I do have Genrite tubs or aluminum. And those will get put on at the end. Paint match, so it's still all cool Jeep look. And we'll end somewhere on the back. I'm trying to get the stretch to pretty much have the tire set flush with the back. So that's why there's nothing on here and cut yet because I don't know where it's going to land. Like I was saying, these 37s are not going to stick around. They're still mounted until my tires show up because, you know, COVID and new world and can't get parts. So eventually I have a set of 39, 1350, R17, uh, BFG, KR3s coming in. So my first time running something other than a Nitto. My buddy Shane talked me to that somehow. Not that these have been bad or done me wrong or anything. They're great tires. Just want to try something different. And the BFGs are a little bit lighter. So me going from a 37, 1250 to a 39, 1350, it's only, I think, like a three or a four pound difference versus like a Nitto 40 is 10 or 15 pounds a piece heavier. So shouldn't put much strain on the axles over what it is now. I know there's more uh, of like a radius or diameter to the tire, more stopping rotation and blah, 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 blah. But I'm more worried about weight, so that should help with that. For suspension, somewhere in this big pile of steering and axles and inner fenders and tubes and everything else, there is, there's the truss, but I have all the links kind of buried down there. That's for the three link front and the rear is gonna be an upper triangulated four link. Um, there's my hoops, some mounting points for the hoops. Uh, all the brackets and all that to mount the links to the frame. All that, all this stuff except for the hoops is from Barnes. Uh, like I said, the hoops, the mounting points, and the brace for the front that goes across, which is cool. It's removable, so you can still service the motor. All that's from TMR. Everything else is pretty much from Barnes or Motorbuilt. Um, but like I said, three-link front, four-link rear with single triangulation in the upper. And I'm using their Enduro joints. Steering's going to hopefully stay the same. We'll have to see. Um, I did finally get my coilovers. They're not from the brand and now shall not be named. They're king for now. Uh, these two are new. This one's used and that one's used. I was playing on springs. That's why they don't match. But, uh, so I'm, I might see if those need to be rebuilt. I don't think so. I was told they only had three trips on them. They look pretty good. But they're 14 inch travel, two and a half inch king coilovers with resis. They look really wicked. They're really big. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to make them fit yet, but they're going to be cool and they're going to be big. So 
to help protect all my suspension. I got some Fox. Yes, I know they don't match. They don't care. Uh, some Fox 204 inch, I believe, bypasses for the front. And for the rear, I have some 204 inch other branded um, bump stops, which I'm not going to name the brand yet, but that's what those are. I'm actually working on shaving the name off and repainting them and rebuilding them. So these were used. So I scored on these. I had to buy these two new, but actually I got these from the same guy that I bought the new coilovers from, my buddy Ginsberg. So he's kind of been a huge savior in this project so far, helping me find all the pieces I can't find. Um, otherwise, I have another box of big joints over here. Steal it everywhere. Drone slaughter rotors, which you can see on that one I have assembled. And black magic brake pads. For the front, or not the front, the inside, it's still stripped apart right now. My stereo is laying on the floor. Still have my uh, radio system there with my ham radio and my intercom. S pod up top, nothing really different. The only thing that's different is the race car wheel, which is unnecessary, but totally cool. So there's that. Um, otherwise, everything on the inside is going to pretty much be the same. I did wrap my seats or rewrap my seats. I'm a big Volkswagen guy. We're in a Volkswagen family. And I've always loved the plaid seats that came in the GTIs. So I wanted to bring that to my love for Jeeps. So I found some um, exact replica material. I forget what the company is that made it, but it's licensed by Volkswagen. So, so it's the legit stuff and it just doesn't have the red in it. This was offered in the GTD, the diesel version of the GTI in Europe. And that's where the black and gray comes from. So that the red doesn't clash with the orange um one more thing for the rear i am still gonna run my basket over the top of all this hopefully it's stronger than it was before it should be because this is way better material than the factory jeep material so it shouldn't rip out um, obviously the fuel saw the jack back here odds and ends and then the tailgate will be a flat back tailgate i'm gonna get the rockman tailgate i think that flips down has a toolbox in it to hopefully clean up and organize so that should be pretty cool. For the fuel cell, I know it's going to be buried, so I'm going to work on a remote fill reservoir somewhere. I don't know. That'll be cool. Figure it out. And then obviously my power tank will stay right there. Never getting rid of that. And I think for the most part, that's going to be it. i got to figure out what I'm going to do for rock sliders. Still working on that. But yeah. So I know I said that I was going to do a whole build series on this, but... Kind of, aside from the fuel cell and the tubs, it's kind of all just been busy work. Like, who cares if I'm grinding, painting, whatever. So now that we're getting to the good stuff, all the suspension, let me know if you guys want to see that as a build series. Just kind of comment below so I can gauge and see if it's even worth it. Um, like I said, I'm working on this. It's me, my dad, my uncle, and some of our buddies that are working on it. Um, for all of us, well, all but one, this is really our first fabrication project, which I know is horrible. But, you know, I've never done a full fabrication project. Let me cut my Jeep in half and build long travel. But we're getting it. So if you guys do want to see the whole build series on the suspension and all that, it should be good because it's probably going to be a bunch of throwing wrenches and yelling at each other and wanting to burn the Jeep down while we figure this out because none of us are really good at this and none of us are great at math either. So... Let me know if that's something you guys want to see. If nothing else, it should be funny, and we can watch watch us try and uh, not destroy my Jeep. So with all that being said, like I said, let me know if you guys are interested in seeing this as a series and wheeling trips and whatever else. I'm, I might actually start the YouTube thing. I've been saying that for years, but maybe I'll actually make it a thing. So let me know if that's something you guys want to see, what you want to see. Um... I know you guys are going to point out my horrible welds and how this is done wrong and how this could be better and all that. And I really don't care because I'm doing it my way and it looks cool and it's going to work and that's all that matters. So let me know what you guys think and thanks for watching.